Hi, I'm Lee, and this week on NASA Now, propulsion. Even the word makes you want to jump up. It actually comes from two Latin words, pro meaning forward and polare meaning to drive. Today we're going to learn about the basic principles of our rocket engine and discover how Newton's laws play a vital role. That's ahead. But first, let's find out what's happening at NASA now. <laughs> Earlier this month, a new rocket engine was tested at NASA's Stennis Space Center in Mississippi. This new liquid fuel AJ-26 engine will be used to power commercial cargo flights to the International Space Station on the Taurus II space vehicle. There are an estimated eight cargo missions slated to go to the space station on the Taurus II space vehicle through 2015. Now, let's take a look at the past. Five, four, three, two. NASA's first rocket that launched man to the moon was the Saturn V. Used by the Apollo program from 1967 to 1973, it remains the largest and most powerful launch vehicle ever brought to operational status. The Saturn V was 363 feet long. It weighed 6,699,000 pounds and its payload to low Earth orbit was 262,000 pounds, or 131 tons. Here to tell us about propulsion and rocket testing is Dr. Lou Povinelli, propulsion specialist and project scientist for the Supersonic Fundamental Aeronautics Project at NASA Glenn Research Center in Cleveland, Ohio. My name is Dr. Lou Povinelli. I'm a propulsion specialist. I work at NASA Glenn Research Center. A rocket is a propulsive device or a device which will generate motion that has to operate with its own fuel and oxidizer in order to escape the atmosphere. In this particular context, we're talking about a, uh, the means by which we can explore space and go to other planets. I think uh, Newton pretty well described it with his law of motion that said uh, the thrust or the force you get out of a propulsion system is equal to the mass times change in velocity. So if you have combusting gases inside of a rocket chamber, the chemical energy that's stored in the fuel and oxidizer gets converted into kinetic energy as it goes out through the exhaust, the, the converging, diverging portion of the nozzle. So the product of the mass and the change in velocity is what gives the thrust. We're only firing the first stage while we're in the atmosphere. So as we get into a second or a third stage, you're now in a different environment. And so our concerns are, given the environmental conditions that exist with varying altitude, how can we ensure that the second stage and a third stage will light properly. What we do at Plumbrook, of course, is try to simulate that ascent profile where the altitude is changing rapidly and where the temperature and pressure of the atmosphere is varying dramatically. Someday, we hope to have a complete theoretical basis we're designing a new rocket engine system, so we never have to test it. We're not there yet. We need some of those students to come up with that math and physics background in order to help us reach that point. Now let's head to the place where space comes down to Earth, Plumbrook Station near Sandusky, Ohio. That's where we caught up with mechanical engineer Brian Jones, who tells us what's involved when it comes to rocket testing. Hi, I'm Brian Jones. I'm a mechanical engineer at the Spacecraft Propulsion Research Facility, also known as B2. B2 is special because not only is it NASA's third largest thermal vacuum chamber, it is the only facility of its type that can test a full-scale upper stage rocket engine in the space environment. It's 
Space is a very hazardous environment. Total vacuum, there's extreme cold, and uh, radiation. Because it's such an extreme environment, it is important to test in a simulation of that environment. In order to do a rocket test, we lift it with our 20-ton crane and drop it into the opening of the test chamber. The test chamber lid is lowered to pull vacuum on the test chamber. The test article is then exposed to the space environment for about a day or two to see if they'll restart, because that's a big problem with upper stage engines. This is an example of a typical upper stage engine that we would test at this facility. This particular model produces about 15,000 pounds of thrust. Now we're entering the test chamber. This is where rockets are tested in a space environment. It is roughly 30 feet in diameter by 60 feet tall. The rockets are lowered into the test chamber onto this structure right here beside me. This is the thrust takeout stand. This secures the rocket, first, so it doesn't fly out of the test chamber, and second, it measures the thrust that the rocket produces. The rocket will fire into an exhaust diffuser. It extends about 38 feet down from the floor of the test chamber. This room right here is the B2 control room. From here, we can operate everything we need to do in a test remotely. The B control building is about a half mile away from the B2 facility. This is to ensure the safety of everyone involved in the test. They can actuate valves, take data measurements, or monitor pressures, temperatures, video screens, anything that we need. Did you know that just 20 seconds worth of fuel remained in the Apollo 11's lunar module when it landed on the moon? Well, now you know. Now it's time to check out what's up. NanoSail D, the first Earth orbiting solar sail, has been spotted streaking across the sky. As it sinks closer to Earth, it could flash 10 to 100 times brighter than the planet Venus. It's the second solar sail to ever be successfully deployed and the first to orbit Earth. Hey, now it's your turn to become rocket scientists. Check out this week's activity on the NASA Explorer School's virtual campus. This week, you and your classmates are going to construct water-propelled engines out of soft drink cans. Think of it as the Pop Can Hero Engine. To get started, visit explorerschools.nasa.gov. Well, that's it for NASA Now. Be sure to tune in next week when we learn about solar storms and the effect they have on the International Space Station. We'll see you then on NASA Now. NASA Now comes to you from the virtual campus at NASA Explorer Schools.